a special day with me. I have this beautiful, beautiful lady, Luba Mason. Luba, it's so nice to collect and grow seeds with you. Uh, I was so looking forward to sharing your, you know, your beautiful, um, first of all, magic. I, I, I every time I think oh, of you, it's like, Thank I you. cannot think, you know, when you think of somebody, you're like, oh, she is this person. But when I think of you, it's like, you are. You're this, 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 this. It's like, how many oh, things? Oh, wow. You're oh. an actress, you are a singer, you are, uh, you compose, you, you change any songs. Like you can, the ones that you can never imagine, you transform it into jazz or, or it's just like you have this way to interpret music Thank and you. interpret the world that is, uh, it's really powerful. And, and I, I experienced that with Triangle, your latest album, the one that I um, I got to. How long ago was that? Like, was it three weeks ago when you had this beautiful um, lockdown yeah, concert? <laughs> yeah, the concert was November twentieth, and um, but I record and I released the album in October, October twenty third. But um, I recorded it in two thousand eighteen. You're so brave to read the virus. <laughs> You're so brave to like release such a such a beautiful album during the hardest time. It's, it's exactly what we all needed. Um, Thank you. Thanks. When yeah, I, it, it, yeah, it took me a while to decide whether I was going to release it or not. There were pros and cons. There really were. When I listened to it, you really took me to a place where I was not expecting it because it was so beautifully shot. It was very intimate. It felt like it was done for the lockdown. You know, mm -hmm. I felt like oh, if you. Oh wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I that's... felt like if you would have done it in a huge place with a lot of people, it would have made me feel this was a while back, and I'm not. I don't. I'm not in there. But your concert was so intimate and so beautifully put together that it, I felt like you. We are there. It didn't feel oh, overwhelming. Thank you. Well, well, first, of, well, first of all, the lineup of the album, it's just three musicians. It's just a singer, a vibraphonist and a bass player. So that's it. I don't have a big, you know, 10 piece band. I don't have an orchestra behind me, nothing like that. So that kind of a lineup, I think, entails a smaller audience, a more intimate setting. And it, it lends itself to that. And on top of the fact that I felt... Um, I really wanted a live experience. I wanted to record the album live in front of a live audience. So I, I, I rented out like the, the biggest <laughs> studio that they had at the power station, which is like the legendary, uh, the most legendary um, recording studio in New York City. Like all the greatest people have recorded there. My gosh. Um, all the greats. And, um, and I invited about like 50, 60 people to come to the recording so it was um it was a live recording which meant wow. what you saw was what you got i mean there was whatever mistakes were made and thank god there weren't a lot none um, <laughs> well i mean to the uh, to a regular audience they wouldn't they wouldn't hear things but um but it was it was live so it was it was quite risky to do it but i thought it was worth it really for the energy you know oh. to have a live audience there and just having that intimacy and performing for someone because it's so different uh from just like recording in a studio i mean when you do adr stuff with with yes you know you're in a recording booth you know with wooden walls and you know totally. you're just talking to an engineer it's very <laughs> different from performing in front of a live audience so yeah it, the it adrenaline really doing it the adrenaline yeah. was incredible but but yeah. the fact that it was very a small group a group that you chose to bring yeah. to this very intimate yeah. place was so aligned with what we're going through right now that's why oh. when I ex when I experienced that entire ex thing, I, I didn't know that you did that two years ago or before pandemic. I thought that you put it together, kind of like what Taylor Swift did. Like she just oh. locked herself in a cabin and and she just did it during the lockdown. It was so it felt like you actually did that for us. <laughs> and wow. that's wow. and that's it. And I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. But you know, but but you know what's yeah, what's great is that 
it's, it's what music does is what the artist is what your intention is it goes beyond it goes beyond what you expect it to be mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. and when i i knew i was going to see you by the time i watched um the concert and i I, I forgot to tell you that, but when you say yes to this podcast, the first thing I wanted to talk about was this experience, the Triangle oh, album. Great, great. <laughs> because it's perfect for the holidays. It's perfect for people that are at home. It's perfect for like the mood and, and the tone. Yeah. And, and also for like such a rough year that we've had. This is an album that really cools you down, calms you down and, and puts you it's back in, in the, to the basics. It's very soothing. It's a real minimalistic approach to music. There isn't a lot of busyness, you know, because it's just a singer and a vibraphonist and a bass player. And it's, and it's very simple. And, um, you know, today music has so much production aspect behind it. And there's so much that can be done in the recording studio to fix, enhance, uh, you know, uh, a, a finished product. This was very pure. It was just very pure and simple. And I think that's really the beauty of it. And, and we've gotten some great reviews, really some great oh reviews my God. for this. Yeah. 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 Billboard the, and, and downbeat. Yeah. They're, they were all like really great. But the reason why it was so simple, that's made me, that's what I thought that you did it for, for, for this time. You're like, okay, oh, lockdown. I want two musicians on me. I just want to keep it simple because the less people, the better. <laughs> so you know, isn't I didn't that even think of that. I really? didn't really think of that. I what I thought of was, you know, I I was in a Broadway show before the COVID, and and that closed down, and I thought, you know, being an artist and being creative, and you, you know, you need to keep those juices flowing and put things out to the, to the public, to people who love music, people who love the work you do, et cetera. So I thought this, this is a good time to release an album. It's good. You know, people are home, people are home. They want to, um, you know, they don't have as much to do and they need some distraction and music is a great distraction. You know, it's interesting. You, you did this album, to, in 2018 and you never mm-hmm. thought in a million years that it would be so appropriate for the lockdown because this was not right. in the plans right and look right. at that it, it it feels like you just did it <laughs> for us <laughs> and uh and that's inc- and you were but the, the truth of it all of the whole matter is that you were doing a show uh in broadway that was doing so well actually you were mm-hmm. You were on stage for how many how many um, shows you got we were, to do? We, like four. Well, well, you, no, it was one week. We opened one week. The show is called "Girl from the North Country." It's it's a musical um, written by a, a brilliant Irish playwright named Connor McPherson, and wow. the the music is uh, Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan's catalog. And um, it's a beautiful play with music. And we had opened March 5th and then March 12th was when New York City just like shut down. So we were literally open for one week. Um, We did have a month of previews. I think that's what I remember. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was a month of previews. And then we opened and we got rave reviews, which was really terrific. And then we even like, you know, recorded the cast album within that first week. (laughs) And, oh you know, God. we're all like gung ho, ready to go with this hit, you know, show, you know, we're going to have a really long run and next thing Travel. you know, everybody's, uh, everybody's closing down around the world. And you're like, hmm, <laughs> I yes. wonder what's going to happen in the, in the United States, you know, and then the next thing you know, they, they shut everything down March 12th. How do you deal with that? Because you're someone, you're like one of the most creative people I've ever known. I mean, in terms of mm-hmm. like you're singing, you sing in different languages and it's mm-hmm. triangle. Like it's, it, you sing in Spanish in the most beautiful, if you, if we close our eyes, we think that you're like someone that is singing in the Caribbean or something. <laughs> like My, my, my Spanish teacher would be proud of, of what oh, you're saying. Oh my right God. <laughs> So you really are someone that takes risks in, t- in terms of your art and, yeah. and your 
I do. And you push the boundaries so much and it shows in your music and your art and your dancing and in your in your acting. How do you do when everything shut down that all those the risks are we have to kind of like shut down too in a way. How do you survive that? How how do you deal with it with the shutdown with Well, first uh, of all, I want to say that when um you know, the city closed down on March 12th. On March 15th, I woke up with COVID symptoms. So I, first thing, the beginning of the pandemic, oh. I did get it myself. My gosh. And so I was struggling with that. And thank God it wasn't serious. I wasn't in the hospital. Um, I obviously I pulled through fine. Mm -hmm. And then unfortunately in eight and like for, for a month, I was really tired. Um, so that wasn't easy. And then in April, Unfortunately, my mother passed from oh from goodness. COVID from COVID as well. She was one of the casualties, and so that was kind of a tough thing to swallow. So, when you say how how you know after having the virus, losing my mother to it, there has to be some other side, <laughs> some some uh, rejuvenating something to, to, to kind of bounce out of this pandemic, really. You have to kind of get yourself mm -hmm. out of it. And that was when I had decided, oh, I have this album in my back pocket. Wow. You know, th this, this would give me something to focus on. This would give me something or give the, the world something to enjoy. It's a positive thing. Um, There were, you know, this is also when a lot of things started happening online. People started finding different ways of channeling their talents. And it's, it's not true. just in music, but, you know, in all parts of, of the, the world and the industry, the medical industry, you, you're all of a sudden having checkups with your doctor on, on <laughs> telemedicine. And, you know, I mean, the internet became such a valuable tool because we couldn't mm -hmm. be around other people anymore. So how did I get myself out of it was deciding to release an album. Um, I, st I also, um, we stay in touch with the cast, the Broadway cast of Girl from the North nice. Country. We, we have a, um, a text thread where we communicate with each other, birthdays or if something <laughs> happens. Um, You know, there were also a lot of things in the Broadway community to now start do some benefits and fundraising for people who oh. um, weren't who were less fortunate, who either got ill, have lost loved ones, um, need financial help and aid. There was so I started participating in a lot of those things online as well. There was like a lot of benefits. I started singing, you know, to, mm. to raise money. And, wow. um, you know, when you, when you, when you start, you know, when you do things like that, it feeds you. It not only helps the it cause helps you that too. you're, you're working for, but it also feeds yourself. It feeds your own soul. And, um, so it's really a, a combination of that. And, and people like yourself have asked me to do a podcast and, um, I, I did actually two other podcasts in the last couple of months You know, things like that where, um, you know, it's, it, it's, one, it, it's flattering for me. I love to talk about the business and what's going on in my life. But it's also, as you say, it, it's, it's helpful for other people to listen to and to maybe be inspired by, um, you know, and for, their, yeah. for themselves. Yeah, I think this year it's it everybody shut down. Like the everybody's world shut down and 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 I think the life of an artist especially when like yourself like you were everything was going. Everything is yes, happening. You are Absolutely. happening. Everything is going. You are performing. You got feedback. You guys recorded the entire album of the cast and it's right. everybody's we saying thumbs up. Ready to go. Ready to go. <laughs> You know, it was like, and this, we would be like the first hit of the season and, you know, the whole thing and boom, just the world shuts down on you. So yeah. it's hard. It's hard. It's But I, I have, I have to say when we shut down, 
little did I know it was going to be over a year that we'd be shut down or, you know, yes. at this point, we're not supposed to be coming back, I think, until like June 1st. That's the deadline. Wow. But I, I thought, you know, when when we I, we heard that we were shutting down, I thought, oh, this is going to last maybe about two or three weeks. They're going to give us maybe a month at the most, you know, <laughs> wait till this blows over kind of a thing. And I was actually happy because I was <laughs> when you open in a Broadway show, it's relentless. You are in a month of previews, you're performing at night. And then during mm -hmm. the day, you're rehearsing and tweaking. So you're 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 nonstop from like 10 in the morning till the show curtain comes down till 11 p.m. And you get up and do it again and you have one day off. So by the wow. time you open, it's like, oh, you know, you wow. just you just want a vacation by the time you open, <laughs> really. Um, and we sort of got it, you know, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's it's true. It's um it, it's crazy the amount of work that we put into something and that's why when it's, oh. when things shut down it's it's how do you recover because it's a full adrenaline. It's like non-stop and then from that to like zero. It's it's yes. hard to to deal with that without feeling like you've you're just being thrown in the you know from the balcony like <laughs> somebody pushed you like yeah. ah, poof, and what's and and with that said, that's that's sort of how I felt even about releasing this album because even though I had recorded it in 2018, I I'm had still shocked to, about it. I was I, planning to release it like in 2019, um, but the show that I was in, Girl from the North Country, was playing uh, off Broadway first, and right. off Broadway we had a limited run and. It became a hit downtown and then they were talking about going to Broadway and I said oh well, maybe I'll release my album when we go to Broadway and then so I waited and you know here I knew I had this great little album in my pocket and I was just waiting to release it waiting to go to Broadway it took another year to get to Broadway we finally opened on Broadway and I'm like oh I'm gonna release it now this year 2000 you wow. know and then Broadway shuts down and you're like oh now what do I do? <laughs> you know? So, um, but I'm glad I did. I'm really glad I did. It was- That's um, impressive. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a really good thing. Yeah. Wow. Luba, when, when you started, what do you start doing first? Do you start singing first, acting first? Uh, what do you start or did it all blend together or- I have to say um, my husband, who is Ruben, Ruben Blades. He, <laughs> I know. Um, when I, I know you know, but I mean, when I first started out, um, when I first started dating him, he's the one who had talked me into um, having a project of my own separate from the theater that I was doing or television that I was doing because he said, it's, you, you know, you're not always going to be employed. You're not always mm -hmm. going to be in a Broadway show or always in a television show or something. That's something you cannot control. But if you have a project of your own, and in my case, like starting a recording career, making albums, writing music, um, you know, getting your own small band together. He says, that's something that's all your own. It's your own project. You have control over, you have the power. And so if you're, you know, having a dry period with Broadway mm -hmm. or television or film or whatever, you can always continue with your recording career. And so he was the one, um, because he is a recording artist, obviously, as well, that he's the one who, who helped me to, you know, just open up another avenue for myself uh, creatively wow. and as a performer. So um, Triangle, this last album I just did, is my fourth solo album. And I have to say, it's, it's, um, it's really been a wonderful... Um, it's really been a wonderful outlet having a recording career. Um, it's, it's another way of expressing myself. Um, yes. Because it's, because it's singing, you know, it's not just acting. Um, and I know theater 
I do musical theater, a lot of musical theater. And yes, that's singing and acting, but it's very different. It's a, it's very a different, different medium. Yeah. But the most important thing is, is the recording. I have power over that. I have control over that. Look what and you've done with Triangle. You have power over this, this thing yes. that when the world shut and down, you like, it. Yes. wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I produced it. You know, I created it. I, I thought of the concept. I hired my musicians I had this filmed, I, you know, it's, it's, it's something really to be proud of when, when you do it yourself, you know, it, it's, it's quite an accomplishment. And I, I, you know, whenever I do master classes for like younger students and they always, they always ask, what would you, what advice would you give younger people starting out in the business? And um, I always say, you know, learn as many skills as you possibly, possibly can, you know, not just being an actor, but learn how to sing, learn how to dance, do comedy, do drama. Um, but I also said, you know, and, and there are times you had to, I've had to roller skate for an audition or sing <laughs> opera or, you know, I mean, some weird, oh, and, and for this show and Girl from the North Country, I had to learn how to play the drums for this role. Really? Yeah, I play the drums in the show. I'm the drummer oh in God. the show, as well as the character that I play. So I, you know, learn as many skills as you can, but also it's really important to cre have your own um, creation or create a new avenue for yourself, whether you like to write, write yourself a movie, a script, a, a mm -hmm. sitcom, um, or get into producing or, uh you know, or if you're an artist, you want to draw or paint. I mean, you know, find yourself another outlet that you can express yourself. It's it's really important. Yeah, I, you know, I, I love that you said that because that's, I learned that the hard way. I, I, you know, this business is the business that you are the most unemployed. You know, you have, you get a job and then you're unemployed again. And then you always mm -hmm. have this unemployed Yes. feeling it, it just it's like an aura that is always haunting you <laughs> and, yes. and it's, it's and it's a terror and it's not a normal feeling to always feel like you don't have a job you know right. it's just weird and and the fact that when I started writing my own things for the first time it's like yes it's that you are employing yourself you're like yes. okay I'm going to employ myself to do what I myself like to do and, yes. and having that creative freedom allows other jobs to come too. Absolutely. Right? I, it really feeds, it, it's just a, a positive action that starts to feed other things, other positive things in your life. And, and it, it's amazing the doors that start to open once you start doing that. And, yeah, you, and you grow and you grow yes. as a performer, an artist, a cre you're creating. It's, uh, uh, it's so gratifying and, and, and it's important. I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really hard because in a business, like you said, you know, 90, 95% of the time, I mean, people, you're going to get rejection, you know, you audition and audition and audition and, you know, the, the unemployment rate is crazy in the acting world and there's so much competition and there's more so now I think. Oh, you think so? I think so oh, too. Yeah. I, I think, th so I think too. now be, because of the internet, because of Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, reality TV. Yes. And I think that when you create your own projects, I, I feel like it's a way to create your own door that eventually will be open for you. You will not mm -hmm. create the specific opportunities, but you create that door with your, with your own project so that people can open and say, Hey, hello, come on in. You're like, wow, I didn't know I was building a door for myself that people can yes. open and hire me. Uh, but it's it, but it's like oh deny I didn't know you you could do this or you could portray this kind of a character or you know you're on Fear the Walking Dead where you're mm -hmm. like killing zombies all the time mm -hmm. and and like look look at this gorgeous woman s is sitting in front of me you know it's <laughs> or the fact that you're producing and writing your mm -hmm. own projects it's all 
you know, people will start looking at you differently as well. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, this is this is a smart person here, you know. And it, it also what it does, it it like you said, like it it just creates it creates it creates a, an identity of who you are for the people that mm -hmm. don't know you. Yes. Like yes. when I listened to Triangle, the Luba I know, I feel like after I finished it, I knew you better. I knew oh, your wow. background. I, I heard you sing in your in your in, in another language, in your mother's language. I, I understood mm -hmm. your background without you even talking about it. The little thing that you said about I ch this song is to honor my my ancestors you took me in that ride and it made me understand oh, wow. the artists behind be, behind the song so it, yeah. it's also building an identity of who you are when you create your own stuff because your own stuff is your own identity it's like a projection of yourself right Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, Triangle incorporates a genre that I created, I, I trademarked in 2000, I think it was 2013, I call it Mixtura. And Mixtura is a genre that I created that is a blend of different musical currents. I My last album was called Mixtura and I had music from all different kinds of genres. Wow. Uh, from pop to jazz to an aria, et cetera. And I carried this genre over into Triangle, my last album. And you're wow. absolutely right. My, my musical influences since I was young were very different. I grew up in, I'm, I'm a first generation Slovak American. My parents are immigrants. So there was a lot of folk music in the house. <laughs> um, I grew up listening to pop radio. So I love pop music. Um, as I've gotten older, um, I love, I've grown uh, to love jazz. Um, my husband is Latin, so I have a lot of <laughs> Latin. I have a couple of Latin songs on there. One is in Spanish, one is in Portuguese. My um, gosh. And, and, And just uh, what? Oh, and I have a heavy metal song. I don't know where that that one. I just threw that one in from System of a Down. I just thought, you know, this is kind of cool. Let's see if this this lineup, this simple musical lineup, can handle a heavy metal tune. How can we translate that? Um, so yeah, you're absolutely right. The album is kind of this identity of it's a you part of who I am. Yes, it yeah. is. It is a product of of who you are today of how mature yes. you are, how much you honor those beautiful cultures. I, I, I and, and, and your, the way that you filter the world in that way too, through music, yes. it's, it's put in one little package. Yeah, and, yes. and, yeah. and, and I feel like authors are like that too. Like every novel, you can see how ah, much they've yes. grown. Uh, yes. You can see how much they've grown. You can see even directors too. Like you can see that transformation Of their where influences. They are. Yeah. Their influences. It's like it's like a stamp. It, it, but but yeah. in this in this album, because it was your creation, it was so transparent into who you are, into mm. what touches you, and, and into that's why I felt like it was so uh it was I thought you just did it because I, I knew everybody this year has grown through so much. And yeah, this yes. and this album is it's it's a result of like this crazy 2020 that you just grab every part of you and just put it there. And, and I cannot yes. believe you did that two years ago. <laughs> it's it's yes, so appropriate yeah. for now. It's so perfect for now. And, and I Thank love you. that. Yeah. I love it's just a way for you to express yourself. And, and sometimes people feel po so powerless when it comes to their art. They, they feel like, oh, if I don't, I'm not working, I don't have any power. I need to wait for 20 people to agree to hire me. And I love that you're like, no, oh, I don't have don't to wait, wait for that. Don't wait for that phone to ring. Don't create your own projects. And, mm -hmm. and, and you'll be um, more fulfilled than ever. You, will, you can create roles, you know, that some, some other writer, you know, couldn't possibly write for you. I mean, if you write a great role for yourself, it's, you know, why not? It's, uh, yeah. So it will spark something in powerful. somebody. Yeah. 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 Luba, when you finish a project or when you start a project, do you get nervous? 
do you feel no, that's the exciting part you don't get nervous no well wow. no, I, I'll, t- I'll tell you when i got nervous <laughs> when you get nervous when- Well, with this project, I was very excited because no one has ever recorded this kind of a musical lineup ever in the jazz Mm -hmm. world or in the music world, just voice, vibraphone and bass. So that was very exciting to me. The nervous part was when I released the album to critics, magazines, you know, newspapers, you know, reviewers, it was like, Oh my God, what are they going to think of this? Are they going to like it? Are they going to hate it? This has never (laughs) been done before. You know, who does this Lugo Mason think she is, you know, doing something, (laughs) you know, I'm not, I'm not Herbie Hancock. You know what I mean? I'm not, you know, Chick Corea, uh, you know, who's this Lugo Mason who thinks she could just throw out this jazz album and voice vibraphone (laughs) bass. And Honestly, I really had no clue what the reaction was going to be. None whatsoever. I, I, I was ready to be crushed. I was ready. I was ready wow. for it. And I went, you know what? If that happens, I try. They can't, they can't tell me I didn't try. And, oh, and, yes. I, I've, and I have to say, when I was recording the album, the two musicians I hired are um, mm-hmm. Joe Locke on vibraphone. And he's one of the top vibraphonists in the country. Um, Mm -hmm. And James Genus is on bass and he's like the bassist for Saturday Night Live. He tours with Herbie Hancock, you know, he's, these are, these are thoroughbreds in the jazz world as far as musicians, these are pros. And even these guys were like, when I hired them for the project, they were like, you know, I've never done this kind of a project before. And, but it intrigued the fact that they did it. It intrigued them. They found it interesting. They Mm. found it challenging because it's a different approach. So it was really when I saw that they were, um, you know, ready to get on board for such an unusual project, I went, I think I have something here. I think think this is very interesting. This is going to be very different. Um, But it's, I remember even Joe said, Joe, the vibraphone, he said, boy, you've got balls, Luba. You've got real balls, you know, because nobody's done this before. And, uh, and the fact that I recorded it live in, in, a, in the recording, you know, they were all just kind of like, who is this girl? You know, what is she doing? You know, kind of like. Yes. So I gave myself a pat on the back. <laughs> well, I, I, think, I think when we are in that state of like, are they going to respond or not? I, th- I think that's when you know you're doing something right to some extent. When your musicians say, well, uh, you didn't know whether they were going to say yes or no. When they say yes, you're like, okay, I'm pushing the boundaries. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. Yes. I'm growing as an artist. I, I'm, yes. I'm going to a place that they've never been before and they are saying yes to it. <laughs> yes. It's, it, you know yes, you're doing exactly. something right. I think so. I think so. Um, Yeah, I always I kind of gauge other people's reaction to kind of try to predict maybe the outcome, but you never can predict an outcome. You never know. Um, Yes. But, you know, that that's how I grow as an artist as well. I mean, even my other two albums, uh, the two albums before this, I did a Brazilian jazz album and I've I've never written music before in my life. And with Renato Neto, who was, um, he was the keyboardist for Prince and he was a collaborator of Prince's. He, he's Brazilian and Renato, who was also the producer of Triangle. But the first time I worked with him was in 2008. And he and I collaborated and wrote music together for, for the, for the album called Crazy Love. And that was a risk because here was this, Broadway chick, you know, this Broadway God. girl performer, and she's writing Brazilian jazz music because Nova. I've fallen in love. Yeah. And I, and again, it was like a real big risk. I didn't know how people were going to react, but when Renato or Renato, like in, in, in <laughs> Portuguese, Renato, when he, when I started coming back with lyrics and with musical ideas and everything, he was really like, 
we got, let's do more. Let's write more. He, he wow. was very, I could tell he liked what I was bringing him. And I was like, okay, I'm doing something right here. This is good. This is good. You know? Yeah. I, I, um, I, I, I think people are always afraid to try to be in that state. Scary. Of, it's scary. It's terrifying. What made yes. you keep going with it? What, what made you keep going? With, With, with writing the, the music, with crazy with love, or risk. with recording, with, with the, the risk. risk, yeah, with the risk oh. of like, because it's scary. It's it's a Be, you're like I'm going. The reward, the reward at the end. Oh my god, you know, just it's not just being proud of yourself, but um, there. It's just so gratifying and, and, and there's growth involved and you end up having more confidence in yourself and more self-esteem mm. and, and the encouragement to keep going then and to keep trying new things. And I mean, I think that that's really what an artist is all about. Um, you have to grow. If you don't grow, you're, you just, you're stagnant. It, yes. you, it, it, you know, that's what we're, that's what life is about, you know, any yeah. human being, you, you know, whether you're an artist or not, um, whatever you do in life, uh, you need to challenge yourself, you need to grow, you need to stretch yourself in areas um, that are out of your comfort zone, you know, because um, that's it, because when you can do that, you can do more. And then you mm. can do more and even more. And you're amazed at how far you can go. You know, mm -hmm. we're, it's amazing how much power and talent each one of us has that we still have untapped. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot in every human being. And the more, the more you stretch yourself and grow and, and challenge yourself, the You know, there's uh, the, the possibilities are endless. They really are in your life. Well, and, and well, if you go out, you know, the trees change. The world is changing, too. Yes. Why makes yeah. you think that you shouldn't, you know, oh, seasons, absolutely. seasons like trees lose, they lose leaves and, and they and they grow taller. You have to trim it like everything grows. Yeah. What makes you think yeah. that you shouldn't grow As, a, as an artist, as a person, you have to grow with the world. It's, everything is growing, yeah. whether you like it or not. And, and yes. it's, it's only nature to push yourself to that growth. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it, it's yeah. part of our, it, sh it should be part of our nature. Uh, where do you think you've been challenged the most as an actor, as a singer, as a composer, uh, as a producer? Where's the one, what part of Luba Every time you start a project, you're like, okay, this side of my life, artistically, it's the most challenging one <laughs> that it keeps you. Wow. I, that's a really hard question. There, there, I don't think there's one answer to that. Um, because anything that I try to do, first of all, is I'm tapping into something new most of the time. And so for me, that whatever I'm doing at the time, that is the most challenging for me at that moment. Um, when I did, you know, Girl from the North Country, when I first started that show, you know, I, I have the story of when I, at my audition, you know, I did the sides for the director, I sang the songs for the director, you know, this was the callback. And then the director said, okay, great, Luba, great. Um, okay, we want this character that you're auditioning for. We also want her to play the drums in the show. Uh, do you play any musical instruments? And I said, well, yeah, I play piano. I play a little guitar. And he says, okay. He says, okay. Do you, th do you think, you know, if you got the role, you would be able to play the drums? And I said, oh yeah, sure. You know, and then, um, you know, and he said, okay, great. Thank you very much. I walked out of the room and I went, what the hell did I just say? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, I just, I just went, you know, you'll say anything in the audition room just to get the job you just want to get the job 
And I mean, if he said, you know, we want her to stand on her head and chew gum and then play the drums and then roller skate, you know, sure, I could do that. Absolutely. You know, and, and then you think, oh, my God, if I get this, I have to learn how to play the drums. And um, that scared me to death. And honestly, wow. every uh, there's one song in the show that I play and sing at the same time. And that's really difficult. It's one thing to just play the drums. It's another to sing and play because you're it's it's like doing this. Yes. And, um, because you're playing in one rhythm and then you're singing in a different rhythm. And I'm singing Bob Dylan lyrics, which oh are my not gosh. simple. No, you know, it's kind of. It's, it's, and what if Bob really goes big. and see you? You want to make sure he that did. you honor it. He came. Oh, he did. <laughs> he came. <laughs> of he course came he when did. we were downtown. We were downtown. He Do you know he was anybody. coming? No, no one knew. We didn't know until the very end. And um, uh, yeah, it, it was um, it was pretty cool. Um and I, and I heard that he really liked me in the show. He liked the drummer. That's so, good. Um, yeah, I, I heard that. But in any case, so what's the most challenging? Um, I guess, you know, if I'm doing something at the time that's new and different, that's really challenging for me at the time because I've never done it, you know, whether it's that or writing music for the that will now I'm thinking of maybe my next album, I'll write some music. I'm not sure. Um, I want to, I want to go back to doing that again. I want to produce more projects. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I want to, I, I, I want to get into a TV series. I want to do more film, you know, that kind of stuff. There's a, yeah. a lot of things I still haven't, you know, uh, tapped into I it. Feel, yeah. You know, tapped into it's a good, it's, it's, it's a good way to feel. Because it's like, there's so much of unknown oh, yeah. territory. Yes. Uh, yeah. And, 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 you know, the other, the other thing about stretching yourself and challenging yourself, you know, I'm not 20 anymore. And um, I don't know if you know, Denai, I'm not 20 anymore. <laughs> you um, look fantastic. I, I, oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, I, you know, I've been in this business a long time. And mm -hmm. there's something to be said about longevity in the business and right. staying current and continuing to get work. And things get harder as you get older, especially for mm -hmm. women in show mm -hmm. business. And show yes. business is a youth is a youth industry. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it does get tougher as you get older, unless, you know, you do become Meryl Streep or somebody, you know, but um, mm -hmm. You know, even even people who have won Academy Awards still oh, have yes. to fight for their next role. You know, it's um, mm -hmm. you you just got to keep, keep creating, on, keep on, keep creating, keep on, keep chipping away, keep improving yourself, challenging yourself. You know, Luba, one of the things that I, I admire about you and I actually told Ruben about uh, and and I wanted to tell you. It's, it's, uh, for someone that has been in this business and travel towards music, theater, Broadway, the fact that you keep pushing the boundaries, keep stretching yourself, it makes your art so refreshing mm -hmm. because nothing Thanks. is, nothing is the same. You know, there's some artists that they stop pushing. So then therefore everything that they produce, it's like a very predictable results yes and i yeah and i feel like the artists that they always put themselves in this place of and they are known they always end up in an unknown place that they end up loving and so so do we as an audience mm -hmm. yes uh, right like wait like the drum Absolutely. like yeah that is so key and that is so key to um keeping you know people interested in you as well you know, yes. it's not just great for your confidence in your career, but but it's keeping other people guessing like, oh, what is she going to do next? What, yes. what 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 will she surprise me again? Or, you know, uh, you know, it makes other people kind of look forward to maybe your next project and what you're involved in. And I yeah. think and I think that's when you fall in love with with somebody's art. 
and I, because you, that person is pushing their imagination and therefore is pushing mine. It's pushing mm-hmm. my expectations. It's pushing everything that I thought that oh. I knew. I, everything that I thought that I knew, I really don't. And the reason why I'm in that place is, is a result of your uh, pushing the boundaries yourself. Yeah, yeah. And and it's really nice to see an artist grow in in this artistic world, pushing that and not getting tired of it or burnt out or no. or feeling like oh I failed in this one because I. I push and it didn't work. There's some people, they just stay there and, yeah. and they just get comfortable. And, and, and that is a lot of the, like when you start a business that is so unpredictable, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, you will get rejection, right? Like you said, you, oh, you at least you, 90% not, of the time, 90% of the time <laughs> it's a no. So if you are defined by a no, then you don't understand why you got into this business in the first place. Mm. because because it's a business that it's 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 you can read anybody's biography every artist out there would tell you i got so many no's there's no one person that says mm-hmm. everywhere i go people were like woohoo like it's it's <laughs> it maybe happened once maybe right. twice but you cannot spend an entire career no. saying yes yeah it's impossible not in this business yeah. not if you're not if you're pushing the boundaries right, right. and and I told Ruben this, uh, and which is your beautiful husband. I said, you know what? The one thing I love about Luba, it's that when I saw Triangle, when I when I meet her, I, the person that I thought I knew, either she has grown so much, but it's it's she just became a different artist that I was not expecting, and oh, and he's wow. like. And you know, Ruben is like, you need to tell her that. I'm like, well, I, I can't, we, we're about to kill zombies. I just cannot call Luba right now. It's just, so it's, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I cannot just do it right now. And, and you know, finding that moment. And, and I always feel like in, this is something that people can relate to. Like any, any business, an attorney, a doctor, a dancer, if you don't push your boundaries, you will not grow into you would not surprise your audience. You would not surprise your, the people, your contribution will right, be more right. limited. Right. And, 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 and you are one of these artists that it's it, every time you say, well, everything I do, I have to push. I don't know. I, I it's, everything is hard. It's challenging. That, well, that's what you know, your result I, of that. You know, even, you know what, when you said that to Ruben and he said, you have to tell her that, you know, just because I'm pushing boundaries and challenging myself doesn't mean I'm walking around, you know, happy and content <laughs> with myself. I doubt myself a lot, you know, and, you know, it's, it's not a sure thing. And because of that doubt and maybe because... Um, I'm not on the cover of People magazine, you know, next week or something. You know, it's like that's not always a reflection of, um, you know, being how famous you are or how well known you are is not always a reflection of how, um, how, what your talent is and what you're capable of doing. And, um, you know, I guess... I, I guess, yes, with, with Triangle, the more people that, you know, tell me that they love it or, you know, I get good reviews, then it's like, okay, th- this, this was a success. This is really good. And hopefully I can build upon that and build upon that. So, but it's, it's, a, it's um, I hate the word, and, but everybody uses it. It's a journey, you know? It is. It's, it's the journey of your life of the business or whatever Mm. you've chosen to do that you're not always going to get paid what you want to get paid or get the Mm -hmm. accolades you, you may want. Um, Mm -hmm. But uh, there's, there, there are people, everything that you do, you you're building upon it and you're just, you know, kind of, um, like like what you just said, you, you become an artist that people start to recognize your 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 pool of work 
that you've right. done and they go, oh, Luba Mason. Yeah, I know. I love her work. I, I love I loved it when she did this show. I loved yes. her first album. I love, you know, she's always doing something different. And I'm starting to hear that and get that now. Now, no I mean, way. I've been in the business for for 30 over 30 years and it's like now I'm starting to get it. And it's like it's kind of nice, like, oh, I'm not you know, people are taking notice. It's really nice. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, um, you know, it's definitely, uh, an accomplishment. Yeah. It's nice. It is a huge accomplishment. And the fact that you've asked me that you've asked me to do this podcast, it's one, I mean, you know, I went, Oh, absolutely. I'd love to do it. You know, it's nice. It's really nice. well, when I when I saw you after Triangle, I felt like I, like I told you, like I felt like I knew you in a deeper level and a more mm-hmm. like in a more like you you know more inside. Uh, and I was so it was so transparent. Uh, and I and we had this conversation, and, and I said, Luba, I haven't had this experience of this album that it was it was an experience, and I haven't. And then you you started to say you're like, well. A lot of artists, they just do one single, like they just do one song yes. and, and it yep. hits. And and you said that. And then the next day, that those words it stick because it, they think you start thinking, right? I'm not, I'm not a singer, so, but I love music. And I'm like, Luba is right. I haven't heard an entire album in so long because yes. all, I, all I've been listening to is one hit, one hit. One hit. I haven't had that experience when I was growing up of like <gasps> an entire album experience. It's a journey. It's a movie. It's it's a it's a trip. It is. And it's it's a total journey in the album. I mean, there's a reason why there is a song list from one to ten or one to fifteen, whatever, however many songs there are in an album. But unfortunately, that's. Um, the way the world is now, it's, it's, it's instant gratification. People Mm. don't have the attention span anymore to really sit down, you know, with, with an album. (laughs) You know, um, I actually, I made an LP. That was a quick little um, advertisement (laughs) there, but um, no, I mean, I used to sit down with an album and listen to it from first song to the last. I used to read the liner notes. I love to hear the stories that were written down, you know, about the songs and how they wrote it or where they wrote it or something. These days people just put a single out and it's like, boom, boom, boom. And oh, and and Instagram, you're just flipping through pictures, just flipping. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, you know, a picture might pop out at you and you go, oh, that's the one, you know, and Mm -hmm. then you maybe check it out. But, but that's the world today. I mean, people don't have the attention span. They don't, we we're hit with so, so much information. We're on overload that people can't take everything in. They want to take everything in, but that's why they might, only have enough time for one song or even a minute of that song or 30 seconds of that. Do I like it? Uh, I don't like that one. On to the next one. Mm -hmm. Little do they know that maybe that's the next 30 seconds of that song might be, you know, freaking amazing. They don't know. They didn't give it a chance. Um, Mm -hmm. Or a movie, you know, uh, anything, anything. the experience of music nowadays is completely different than even Very. 15 years ago. I remember mm-hmm. we would get, like I say, an album and people would talk about an album. Hey, do you yeah. hear this album? Hey, do you hear this album? It was like right. an album. Amazing. That was amazing. No, and now it's like a song, a beat. A, a, and, yeah. and I don't know where that will take us because... I feel like we grow so much from that experience of an album, yeah, right? Like we have it, our journey. It, it's it's a it's the way we learn. We we learn from and also the stories. Like I remember when artists would sit down and talk about they would break down each song like it is a script. Like yes. this song is about my mother and this and that. And you will listen to the song through the artist's imagination and yes. the way it was created. And it was a different experience. Yeah. 
and I and I when I listen to your album, I haven't had that experience in so long that when I saw you, we talked about this very specific subject and you really broke down how how things are changing. Mm -hmm. And and this is one of the subjects that I really wanted to tap is it's it's how it's not just changing in the acting world that is now we have reality shows and it's like no albums anymore but also in the music business it's it's like we have to be so aware because sometimes we're you know we get hits like you said we just get this constant hits and songs but we don't we we start forgetting where everything started why you know why why we fall in love with songs and music in the first place we fall in love with an album we fall in love with the well, artist's we, creation we we what's going to what's happening what will happen and is happening right now is we're losing a lot we're we're because we're on overload from the internet our phones etc the television we're losing a lot of quality wonderful stuff there's there's uh, there are young people today um because they don't have the attention span because they just can't focus on things it's all instant gratification these these kids they really they don't know you know who who like the classic singers of the day were i mean I, do mm -hmm. they know who frank sinatra is do they know mm -hmm. who the well the beatles even the beatles mm -hmm. do do the I don't know, ask a, I don't know what, what a six-year-old, a, you know, seven-year-old, eight-year-old, nine-year-old, do they know who the Beatles were? I, mm -hmm. uh, it's not just music, it's actors, famous actors, um, mm -hmm. Robert Mitchum or John Wayne or- Paul Newman. You know, Paul Newman, you know, I, it's like, I, I don't know. We have like a 24 year old in our, in our, in our Broadway cast. And I, I forgot who the actor was. We were, you know, um, we were talking about, I don't know, maybe it was no, maybe not Paul Newman, but it was some older actor. And the 24 year old said, who's, who's that? And, you know, I just, we just kind of looked at each other. Like, I can't believe he's 24 and he doesn't know who this classic actor is. I can't remember who it was now, but in any case, <laughs> we're, we're losing a lot of valuable history and information. And it's, it's sad. It's really mm -hmm. sad. I don't know what's going to happen to like the younger generation. Um, what, what people don't realize is that uh, what people don't realize is that we are really a product of all of them. We, you know, talking about pushing the boundaries. Uh, like artists push boundaries based on what those people created, like Freddie Mer Mercury, you know, like what he created, what right. came out after that. Like we cannot forget. It's like forgetting where you come from. It's forgetting. Oh. It's forgetting who we are. That's and and that's why when you created this album, you reminded me what my experience was with music. You made wow. me conscious of it. Because I haven't, it, because your a concert was live, right? I was, yeah. I, I and was I touched it. on different areas in music and yes. different aspects of myself. And so there was a lot to kind of take in. To receive, yeah. Di and, and, yeah. and different dimensions, yes. And, and you reminded me of how I used to receive music because I've been getting uh. so little because I've been just getting hits <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and I am lucky that I, I can compare the two, the difference, because I knew what it was like to listen to an entire album and, and, and just getting hits. And now I'm like, Whoa, I remember what this felt, but imagine people that grew up with just getting hits only, only hits yeah. songs. So it's important to, uh, to talk about it, to, to say, Hey, there's another way to, to listen, to enjoy, to appreciate. I, th I think I think that's another reason why um, LPs, you know, albums are are becoming popular again with a younger generation. Um, it's not not just the sound, but I think it's also 
going back to how we used to experience music experience before CDs, before digital, before CDs, before cassettes, before eight tracks, Mm -hmm. you know, it was the LP, it was the album and um, it's becoming popular again. So um, I don't know. We'll see. see I think in a way we're seeking that. Uh, without knowing, some people they don't know that they are seeking that, and, and they they are like, oh, I just want to buy a vinyl. I have the vinyl, so it right. sounds so like woo. Right. <laughs> and right. uh, but I, I, what, that was one of the conversations. I just felt like people can really connect to that because, especially yeah. now being home so much, you know, people listen to music. But what about if you listen to music with a different filter as a journey, as like? what it was intended yeah. to be because yes. you, you you just get to know the artist better you get to know the musician better absolutely absolutely right? absolutely you, it, it, i mean yeah. obviously they're talented but you will get to know like them better yeah there's well i mean you know i think that's why i i've also ventured more into jazz because it's um it's a more layered and sophisticated type of music Triangle is like jazz pop or, you Mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of different elements in it. But, um, you know, I guess that's why pop music is so popular with a younger generation, because I don't know, pop, pop. Pop singers are generally very young and it's very they're very two dimensional. You know, it's just. You know, they're cute, they're pretty, they're, you know, they've got a lot of energy and they wear cool outfits and they do great videos. And do you really know anything about this artist? Not really. You know, they're just selling records and they're popular because they're good looking or something. Mm -hmm. Their their music's great to dance to or something. Um, But yeah, I I guess um, not all pop music is like that. Some of it has more depth to it, but... um, um, yeah, there's definitely something to be said about that. Just, just learning, you know, getting more of an music, having more substance and get really getting to know the artist better, you know, and there's more to it than that. And what is your next step? Like where is after this 2020 <laughs> that we're still almost Woo! done with, what, what is your, what has, what happened to Luba now after Triangle is out this hard year, your life was put on hold to some extent. Uh, what is, wh- where's this butterfly flying now? Like, where, well, where's you know, your, where are you going? <laughs> well, um, I, I was, I have to say, I'm, I'm lucky enough that I also, um, I, I did a film in 2019, was it? No, it was 2018 as well. I did a movie, a political horror film called red pill which is being released in the spring and what? um yeah and and ruben plays my husband that's a real stretch <laughs> and, very um, very easy right there <laughs> yeah it's be, it's being re, it's being released in the spring and it's about five progressives going into red country on the on the eve of the election and it, this is like foreboding of what we just went through and wow. they go into red country trying to, you know, persuade people to vote for the blue, the blue ticket, um, uh-huh. the candidate on the blue ticket. And one by one, these friends start to disappear. Um, so it's a horror That's film, such a good premise. A, oh, it's a political horror from it was written by Tanya Pinkins. Um, oh. She wrote it, directed it, produced it and starred in it. And um, it's her first feature film and it's an independent. And um, anyway, that's, that's coming up now in the spring. And I'm, I'm very excited about it because I have a pretty, pretty big role in it. Um, oh my gosh. And yeah, so that's great. Um, I know Tanya. Before- she was on our show. I know Tanya. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Tanya. she was on Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah. That's she right. Played, that's right. She played I Filthy forgot. Woman. She's so she's so well she was your director here she was an actress so you couldn't connect them but she she was so she's such a new yorker she's a broadway actress too yes uh, right yeah yeah she's a tony winning actress yes yeah um but she she also fantastic 
Yeah, she has also has um, stretched herself, expanded herself in different areas. I mean, the fact she wrote the screenplay, she's directed it, she's produced it. I mean, she's starring in it. Um, you know, this is a woman who created a fabulous project for herself. Wow. You know, why not? And is um, she in it? Is she yeah, acting in it too? Yes, she's the lead. She's the lead. Wow. Yeah. Um, so in any case, uh, Catherine Irby is in it. She's from a law and order criminal intent. Uh, yes. And Catherine Cur Curtin. Yeah. Catherine Curtin is also in it. Also, um, uh, Colby, Colby Minifee. 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 Yes. Minifee. Minifee. She's in it as well. Yeah. She's My also gosh. in it. Yeah, in April's so it's, coming it, out? Uh, in the, she said right now it's in the spring and there's a, a trailer that's out now. So um, What? Yeah, I must I'm put really this looking, in, the, in the link. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> it's really cool. It's really cool. I got, yeah, I think, I think the, uh, the, the trailer is on my Instagram as well. Definitely um, check it yeah, out. That's, that's next. I mean, I'm going to continue pushing Triangle because it's just recently been released. But um, the film thing is coming out. Um, as of now, June 1st is when we're going back to Broadway. Um, but I'm already also thinking about my next album. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, when, so when, you start sure. create, when you start creating an album, do you always feel like a blank page and you just don't know where to go? Or you already have like feelings? No, I have ideas. I, I already oh. have ideas for two or three albums in my head right now. Oh it's just gosh. like, which one do I do first? Which one do I do first? My gosh, Luba, you're a buyer. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep the, you just kind of keep the, the film rolling in your head, in your brain. You just gotta keep it going. When keep you the think juices of juices flowing. When you think of album, do you think, when you, you don't think on one song, you think of the whole experience, right? Yes. Yes. Mm. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, it's, I mean, I like to do things that haven't been done before or I haven't done them before or something that might surprise an audience. Um, and I think this next album will do that. Oh, my God. I can't wait. Yeah, I've, 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 I've already talked to someone who's going to help me um, create it, too. I already. I, so yeah. So the seeds are seeds are planted and it'll it'll be two or three years. But um, yeah. Yeah, we'll be ready. I mean, that's that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Luva, I, I knew this conversation was going to be so exciting. I mean, again, I, I kind of knew that something awesome was going to happen. But look at this. I didn't know <laughs> that you had like already, you know, seeds planted and already yeah. thinking about uh, things ahead. What yeah. the last question I have for you, what is 2020? What is the one thing you've learned? that you didn't know about yourself mm. this year? Wow. What didn't I, what have I really learned? Well, you know, life is really unpredictable. Mm. You know, you can plan as much as you want till you're blue in the face, <clears throat> but Things don't always go according to plan. I, I think always have a plan B in your back mm -hmm. pocket. Always have, uh, be prepared really for anything to happen. Um, and I think I'm just really grateful. <clears throat> I think how we started this, this conversation, uh, this podcast, is um, trying to be trying to have something that you have control of in your life um, so that you're not always empty handed, that you're not just stuck being bored. I don't know what to do. Uh, pitying yourself. Um, why me? Um, I think just having something uh, of your own that you have control over that you can continue creating and pushing forward in your life. Um, like something that just continues to keep you alive. Um, yeah, because the unexpected can always happen. 
And God knows, I don't, nobody knew this was coming. Nobody knew this was coming, this COVID thing. And yeah. it's really taught a lot of people a lot. Um, yeah. It caught a lot of people off guard. Mm -hmm. um, financially, um, emotionally, you know, spiritually, a lot of things. Um, yeah. But, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I think that I, that kind of makes sense. It does, does make that make perfect sense. sense. It, <laughs> makes per it makes yeah. It makes perfect sense. And I mean, and the fact that you have this wonderful podcast, you know, how it was great born, is that? It was born out of, out of the lockdown. I said, I, well, I there you it, go. I, there you have oh, it. Yes. Oh yes. It's making, I, it was born. It's yes. making lemon lemonade out of oranges. I don't know. You know, it's oh, like totally. You know, it's um. You can't, you can't always control what the, what life is going to bring you next, but mm -hmm. you are in control of what, you know, something in your own life that you can do. You know, you're not, you're not so yes. helpless there, you know, um, there's always something you can do. There is always something you can do. I mean, I just had dinner with a yes. friend of mine last night and, um, she had a really horrible week last week. Um, oh some really big life event things just kind of came crashing down on her last week, you know, work-wise, personally, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And she was really depressed. And I, I kind of just gave her a pep talk, you know, like, okay, it's okay to be sad for a while. Um, you yes. know, you have to experience it. You have to go through it, but, but going through hardships, always teach you something you learn from your hardships you grow from it you get stronger from hardships there's always something to mm -hmm. learn from it and um you have to you 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 have to um learn from that you have to learn from your hardships because that's the only thing that's going to move you forward absolutely this is yeah. and this is something everybody it's such a beautiful way to kind of close a year. Yeah. It's uh, you know, what's left of what's left of, of us is definitely stronger. It's a yes. stronger version of you. Yes. It's not a weaker version of you. Absolutely it's, not. Absolutely. It's it's not. a it's a stronger and I'm very excited and curious to see what people are going to do with that strength that uh, you know and what that, the mindset the fact that we cannot take life for granted, the fact that we no. cannot take no. our time for granted here the, the, and create those, those moments that if you cannot, if you don't have a place to express yourself, create them because yeah. you don't, there's no time to wait. There's no, no time. there really isn't. I mean, a whole mm -hmm. year has gone by and yeah. you know, a lot of, several of my friends are just bored, you know, and it's like, <laughs> Oh gosh, no. That's such a waste. That's a waste. Well, mm -hmm. I can't do anything. I can't see anybody. I can't work. I can't. Yes, you can. There's always <laughs> something you can do. There's something. Yes. So, um, I love know. that you did this singing to raise money for other people. Oh that, yeah. That's oh. Oh yeah, and then there was also so a washing beautiful. your hand, a washing your hands challenge I did, where you know they they wanted you to wash your hands for twenty seconds, you know, make the form with the soap <laughs> while you sing. You're singing a song, and, and and the point of it is, you have to wash your hands for twenty seconds for them to be fully really clean. This was at the beginning of the epidemic, and people would go on and watch these singers and Broadway actresses and actors, you know, do this and then they contribute <laughs> money. So, you know, you, there's little things you can do. It's, it, I mean, you know. Giving back is so exciting. Oh, it's, uh, yeah. and, 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 and it's part of, again, the growth and it's part of our, I mean, what else, what else is there to contribute, but, but just to give what your talent in return of, you know, some comedy action there, yeah. <laughs> raising money for, for other people. Yeah. Luba, what a pleasure it's been to have you. Oh, I, here, I? I really, really admire your, your work, your, your work ethic, your, your will to keep pushing those boundaries. I, 
I tend to tell Ruben this all the time, but I feel like this is the time <laughs> that I actually can tell you because he always tells me to tell you. He's like, tell her, okay. tell her. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to tell her and everybody's going to hear me. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> So think I just really it's from an artist to another like you know it's really inspiring to see that to see somebody that that keeps keeps th there's always something out there to look for oh, yeah. and 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 to always channel yourself change yourself turning you know it's like water you put it in a glass it turns like a glass you put it in a bottle it turns like a bottle is 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 that you deal with the arts like that you turn you it into to. jazz and, and another thing is it's never too late to try something new and different. It's never too late. I don't care if you're 75 or 25, mm -hmm. you know, people say, oh, I'm too old already to do that. Or, you know, I'm not old enough. I don't have enough experience. You know, it's either one way or the other. It's never too late to try something new and different. It never is. Um, so. I love that. But that's what keeps you young and beautiful. Oh, yes. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Thank because you, you always you always put yourself in the in the shoes of a student and and when you're a student you're always you're very wired up and and w eyes wide open something new <laughs> it's great yes. to be a child. It's great. Yes. Kids are kids are so curious. They want to know yes. everything. They're sponges. And to carry that as you get older is, is a gift. Well, it's like you saying, yes, I can play the drum. It's like saying a oh, child. Oh, oh, sure. you wanna... oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I can do oh, it. I can do that. <laughs> and oh, my God. When you leave I the can't room. do that. I can't do that. <laughs> oh, my God. And what did I just do? I know, I know. And my cast members are like, I could not do what you're doing out there on stage. And, you know, every time I go out on stage to sing and play the drums, I'm like, my heart is. But, you but know, that's that the little girl alive. in you. Yes. That's the little girl. That's, yes. that's little Luba trying Luba. to do She's the curious. thing. Can I do this? I can do this, you know. It's, yeah, it's, but that's. Yeah. That's what makes you unique. That's what makes you special. Oh. That uh, that that's what when Ruben told me about the play, the first thing he said, he's like, "She's playing the drums, oh. and she's good at it." And I'm like, yeah. "Did she study that?" She's like, "No, <laughs> she did." It's no. not like she knew this <laughs> forever. But that's the and, little and, and, Luba that you kept and the, alive. And the and the New York Times critic Ben Brantley, who can slash you to bits in a review. My said gosh. and Miss Mason, who plays the jaded Mrs. Burke, and is a knockout yes. on the drums. And I was like, <laughs> "Oh my God!" You know, from from this re hard reviewer, he's telling me I'm a knockout on the drums. I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> but that's 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 little Luba saying, "I could do it." Yes. Yeah, that's little you talking. It was no like adult Luba. The adult no. Luba came out when when you left the room. Say, what did I just say? That's exactly that's who like came out of the room. <laughs> that's like, the oh. that's the person that is like, wait, that was not okay. But no. the little you is 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 way is way more awake that than the than the adult Luba. Yeah. And that's yeah. something I tell people: always have that little part in you that wants to do it. That child, you that really you. want to. Yes, yes. yes. We all yes. do. We yes. all. Want. How many how many times do we see things you know that people do, and you're like, oh, I wish <gasps> I could do that. Oh, I wish I had the nerve to do that. Oh, I wish I had you know the. The, you know, whatever it is, you know. the will or, or like the, the will. passion, uh, whatever, Something. but you, and, but, but you everybody can. can. Yes. Yeah. You just have to raise the hand and say, I, I, I can do it. Don't worry yeah. about whether you can, you will do it. But that's the child. That's, that's children. When like, who wants to go outside? Ah, like, ah yeah. <laughs> who wants to ride the so, bicycle? I do. Who wants to ride the camel? Yeah. And you're like, oh, yes. Camel. Oh, a camel. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, that's, and, a bumpy, and that, <laughs> that's a bumpy back anyway I, I feel like when we grow up we start seeing danger and and when you manage to grow up as an adult and as an artist and you can overcome that danger of like you playing the drum you making this triangle with like two two musicians if yeah. you, you if you keep that alive it's what keeps you 
fresh. It's what keeps you excited. Oh, yeah. It's what keeps you unique. It's, that's it's, what it's I was that little child. Yeah, that's what I was trying to accomplish. You, you're not accomplishing. You're living it. You're living Good. it. And oh, I can't wait I like to see that. the next one. Okay. You're, you're, I can't wait to see your next album. I think we're okay. going to have to do this again because I'll be like, okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll be there. I'm there. I'm there, Denai. I'm there. Yes. <laughs> you see? <laughs> thank you luba so much this has such been a such a beautiful such a beautiful pleasure keep that little child in you alive yep. and uh i can't wait to play with you when i next time i see you we have to Good. do something fun again yes anytime and, uh, anytime yes but you stay in touch and uh okay. and i everybody stay tuned for triangle because i'm gonna be putting everything out there for you okay yes thank <laughs> you thank you thank you so much Mwah. Bye bye. <laughs> bye.